Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I'm in a new location. <laughs> I have said that so many times over the last like year and a half, two years. Anyway, just I'm not going to get into it right now, but I am back in Austria. I've left Germany. I'm back in Austria. This is my parents' apartment that I'm in. And I'll talk a bit more about that, like, at the end of the video, if I remember. I don't always remember to talk about these things. But, yeah, just to make you aware, a new location. <laughs> and that is part of the reason why it's been a while since I've filmed a podcast video. I have a lot to show because the last time I filmed a podcast video I think was back in around this time in December I think it was just before I left for Dubai so it's been three months <laughs> so of course I've done quite a bit of knitting uh even though well with getting COVID at Christmas time that did impact a bit how much knitting I got done over the holiday period but I've made up for it <laughs> so I've got a lot of finished objects to share, I've got a lot of whips to share and I kind of had to decide, well, the finished objects decided themselves that they weren't all going to be included in this video because I can't find some of them. So I'm, I've unpacked everything from Germany but I haven't finished putting everything away so I've still kind of like unpacked certain bags and then repacked them with like all the same kind of stuff. So and then like my yarn and clothing and things like that to make it a bit easier once I get everything else sorted in my room here to be able to unpack that properly. But it means that I can't remember where I've put one bag which contains a few finished objects. I literally cannot remember where I've put it. So I need to find that over the next week or so for the next video. So there's some finished objects that won't be included in today's video but it will be in the next one or at some point and I'm also not sharing all the whips that I've been working on because with some of them I just haven't made very much progress or there's not much to say so I was like I'll leave it for a future video and I've got plenty of projects to talk about anyway. So let's start with what I'm wearing because I haven't been able to wear this one for a really long time. So this is my Ara sweater by Petite Knit and I made this in 2021 using mainly like scraps or leftovers from the Fiber Fox. So all of the like fingering weight sock yarn is the Fiber Fox, all the mohair is the Fiber Fox as well. And I just paired it in such a way that like the mohair sort of matched <laughs> the fingering weight yarn. So the worst match really is this dark green because the yarn underneath it is yellow and light green and brown. But I still like it. And this red is actually paired with a yarn that's more like light purple and light pink. But I used up a lot of yarn with this project and I also just love it because it's just my scrappy fiber fox jumper. <laughs> and I wore this for Yarn Dale in 2021. So yeah. It's so fluffy, it's so cozy, and yeah, just the weather today isn't that great, <laughs> but it has been a bit sunnier, it's still relatively chilly, but it's starting to get warmer, so spring is coming, and this is just really nice to bring some colour into, into my life. So, of the knitting projects, let's start with one that I finished all the way back in December. So just before I left for Dubai, I managed to finish my Yule Skogenza. So you can see the color the best here. <laughs> so it's a dark green with a white contrast color. The pattern and the yarn is by Hillesvag. And I love it. I love it so much. I have blocked it. The ends are woven in. I just haven't snipped them. <laughs> and I have worn this a couple of times already. I haven't worn it out yet, so it's not too bad that I haven't cut the ends off, right? <laughs> but it, it's an 
absolutely gorgeous jumper. It wasn't always that fun to knit though, I have to say. So I probably won't be making another one of these in the future. But never say never, because I think it is beautiful how it's turned out, but the actual like color work chart just wasn't fun to work, in my opinion. So I'm never a huge fan of knitting these like flea stitches. I find my tension is just terrible for them. And the trees were also quite tricky to knit just because of figuring out where to catch floats and things. And so what I eventually ended up doing, which I've talked about before, is ladder back jacquard. So you can see, you can see the trees, but then you can also see these white lines here. So that's where I uh, increased by one stitch, which you then work on the back of the fabric. So you can't see it at the front. And that's just where you then effectively catch your floats, but it's with a stitch, so it's easier to maintain tension. And it's just stretchier. And then you decrease that stitch. So that really helped, but you can see I didn't start that for quite a while. So the trees start here. And then I didn't do the ladder back jacquard until here, because I didn't think it would help. <laughs> I'd known about it for so long, and it, but it really made a difference. And if it hadn't, I could have just decreased that stitch and gone back to catching floats normally. So I should have just tried it. And since trying it, I've been using it a lot more. Yeah, so this chart wasn't that fun to knit, but then, you know, the rest of the body is just stock in it. And then you've got just the small little color work at the bottom, which you also do on the sleeve. And I... <laughs> I don't know, I feel a bit conflicted about these little colour work repeats because a one by one colour work is really fun to knit but normally my colour work tension is a little bit loose the same and if anything then compared to my normal tension either the same or a little bit looser but when I do one by one colour work like you have to do here for a few rounds my tension is really tight <laughs> I think it's because it's so quick and easy to knit that the whole thing just tightens up on me. So I have to be really careful or go up a needle size if, it, if I do find that it's too tight. But yeah, so they're sort of fun to knit, but I have to be aware of potential tension issues. And so that just annoys me sometimes. Uh, twisted rib for the top here and also all the other ribbing which I don't mind doing and it's only officially half because it's only the knit stitches that you twist and it's a folded down collar which you actually have to sew down obviously if you chose to like cast on fold it over knit them all all the stitches the live stitches together with the stitches you have live stitches with your cast on stitches then you don't have to do that but because this pattern was only in Norwegian, I kind of just completely followed it and then not until later did I think I could have just done that straight away. I didn't have to sew it down. I don't mind sewing things down. I don't really mind sew seaming things in general nowadays. I quite enjoy it because it's just something different. And the yarn is so much softer after washing and blocking. Now saying that it's not like it wasn't nice to begin with and i'm not very sensitive with yarn but it's so nice and fluffy now and just really has softened up a lot and i love it i love it so much and yeah it was really nice to knit with even though i didn't enjoy the color work chart all that much and yeah, the few times I've worn it has just been in the house and it's just mm, it's so nice and cozy. I couldn't take it off for quite a while because it was just, it was a combination of it fits really well and I'm so proud of this jumper. Normally I'm not a huge fan of big open necklines, but this one for some reason it kind of just works when I've worn it. And I think that might be because I was wearing it at home so I wasn't wearing a t-shirt underneath because if I wanted to take it off I could just take it off and put on a t-shirt because I was at home and I think maybe that's why I don't really like open necklines because I typically wear a t-shirt underneath so yeah the neckline is actually okay so far but that might change in the future and yeah I love it so you do decreases on the sleeves which I am always a fan of but you can see 
sort of it's not a lot of decreasing so you you're still left with a relatively loose loose fitting sleeve and yeah just really beautiful so the pattern and the yarn like i said was from hillesvag so it was like a kit that i bought at the end of 2021 and i've only now just finished it um so it took me a while but it just wasn't a priority project but it does mean that the pattern as far as I could see at the time, it might have changed now. You could only get the pattern if you bought a kit. You couldn't just buy the pattern, but that's sometimes the case at the beginning and then that changes after a while that you can then buy it. But if I find anything, I will correct myself down below. So that's the first thing. And that was something I finished, like I said, all the way back in December. And there's a lot of other things I finished since my last podcast where I've talked about them in my 12 minutes of Christmas videos, which ended up 12 minutes, yeah, 12 minutes of Christmas vid video series. And it's the last video where I go through all the different things and share pictures and stuff. So I'm not going to share them here now. Yeah, I think I'm not. Like I might in the future if I remember, but right now I'm like, I've got so much other stuff to cover. And... The main one, and I'll include a picture of this one because it's one I'm really proud of. I think it's like the the knit from last year that I'm the most proud of. And that's the vest that I made, the like Christmas vest I made for my brother where I adapted like two patterns and combined them and made this like really ugly kind of Christmas vest with that you can like open and close with buttons. It was steaked and all over color work and it was just <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so I'm really proud of that one. Um, and he should hopefully be getting that soon. So my brother and his family are meant to be in visiting my parents in April. So it will mean that, and I've left everything for them because I made each of them something. Um, they'll get that all when they're in Dubai. So I'm really excited to see what they think. <laughs> Mainly, I want to see what my brother thinks of his vest and what everyone else thinks too, because I think they'll find it funny. Then... I have quite a few sample nets to share. The first one, which I've shared off, shared off? Why do I keep saying shared off instead of shown off? I don't know. It's because I'm sharing it and I'm showing it off. But I've shown this on the podcast before, but it's done now and blocked. Ends are woven in, but not chopped off. <laughs> and this is the Felix cardigan. First of all, it is not a size inclusive pattern. I think the biggest size is a 57 and that's finished size. And it's meant to be worn with a decent amount of ease. And just wanted to mention that because size inclusivity is something that matters to me. Um, and I can sort of understand why it's a pattern that's a little bit more tricky to grade because Kind of fits into what I was about to say about the pattern anyway. The raglan that you do is with these eyelets. So you create this really beautiful pattern. But what happens is for bigger sizes, because you need more stitches, you'd have to do more of these repeats. And it would mean that your yoke depth would just be insane for some of the bigger sizes. Well, all of the bigger sizes. If you went bigger than the 57 inch finished size. But... What you can do is to kind of go, okay, we're going to give each repeat, uh, like each size, so many repeats of this, or that it reaches like a certain point on a person, and then the rest will do with normal raglans, and then you can increase every round, and then you can prevent the yoke depth. So there is a way, it's just it requires some work, and apparently it's just not happening, which is a shame, because both the cardigan and the Felix pullover a really popular pattern so I don't know why the designer hasn't gone back to change the sizing but just wanted to be honest about that but on a happier note this sample is for Jess from Skein in the Stitch it's her yarn and I used a DK weight yarn which is kind of the like the main colors you can see these kind of greens and sort of browns and like purpley tone it's it's beautiful the different colors that you've got in here and that's her merino dk 
base uh it's actually her lux dk i've just remembered so it also has i think it's cashmere in it so this feels stunning because then the reason that this is all quite light in color is because i held it with a surya alpaca in the color bone which is a it looks sort of undyed but if you actually look at the skein it's not and if you look at what it's kind of done to this it, it's something that i don't think will show up on camera but it's not undyed there's it's called bone it's from the buffy collection and it really is kind of like if you've ever looked at bone it's not just white there's like patches where it's a little bit darker a little bit grayer and that's exactly what the skein looks like and it's beautiful so i held those two together to get gauge because originally jess and i had talked about me just using the dk weight yarn and while i got gauge it was so open and see-through and holy and i was like i just don't think it looks good and i had bought the suri off her during her buffy pre-order and it was the only Suri of hers that I had that would have worked. I had a different color, which I'll show off later. And it's a red and it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> so I swatched, saw the color like combo and was like, this is beautiful. In my opinion, even more beautiful together. So I then talked to Jess about it. She was like, yep, that's fine. Use that. Um, and then she immediately was like, but hang on, wait, it's your yarn. Are you okay with using it? I was like, Jess, I don't mind. And she's like, okay, I'll dye you up more. And I was like, it's fine. I didn't really care because, well, one, Jess and I are friends. And then it's also like, I want to make sure that the thing I'm knitting on turns out right. And I'm happy to use yarn that was meant to be for something else for a project to make sure it's right. Because I can always change my plans for the other one. But this, you know, was a sample piece. It was for her. It was her yarn anyway. So it was fine even if I did pay for it. And went quite quick because it's quite an open gauge. The Suri fills in the gaps, which is why it then works up really well. And yeah, quick knit is just, you have to work it flat because it's a cardigan. It's not steaked. And that was the only thing that kind of slowed me down in the yoke with like the increases and everything. But then after I finished all of that, the like body, the two sleeves, the button band went really quickly. And the good thing also is the body is slightly cropped. So that meant it also went quite quickly. And I've said this before, but I always have this thing with garments that are worked flat that I go through a phase of the beginning where I'm like, this is really hard, I don't like purling. Well, it's not that I don't like purling, it's just it's slower and it's not as easy for me to just do as a knit stitch. But then after a while, I enjoy the fact that there's, like you get to switch between knitting and purling and I end up enjoying it. And then, you know, you finish the body and then the sleeves are worked in the round and then I'm like, I want to go back to working flat now. <laughs> always. It always happens. But yeah. But it, it all went really quickly after the yoke. And I think it's because all the kind of... Not that this is a difficult pattern. Like there was nothing difficult about the yoke. Especially with eyelet increases. It's really simple. But you know it is something where you have to pay attention. Is this an increase round? Isn't it? How many repeats have I done? How many stitches do I have? And then the body was really simple. And the sleeves have decreases. And that's what helps me get through sleeves really quickly. Because I get excited to get to the next decrease. And then I'm like, oh, just walk. I'll just knit a few more rounds. Oh, but I could do another decrease. It's like stripes for me. So I don't have buttons yet. <laughs> and um, I still need to get some. Because there's a place that I normally order a buttons from wooden buttons from in Germany from Etsy but before I left Germany she didn't have stock of the size that I needed and then with the move and everything and the move happened really quickly I just was like okay well I can't order them to Germany I was like well I could order them to Austria but they just haven't been in stock and I haven't found anything else and I, as I'm filming this video East Anglia Yarn Festival is happening and I was meant to send this and I completely forgot. With the move and everything happening and the unpacking and stuff, 
I put this and another sample that I was meant to send to the side, like in a box ready to go, and then just didn't do it. And then went to film this and was like, hang on, wait, I still have these. <laughs> so, but it, it's, it, I've told Georgie and Jess and said, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> And yeah, so the only thing that is missing is buttons and then I also just need to snip the ends off. But it was a really fun knit and if it wasn't for the sizing issue, I would totally knit this again. And I don't know, maybe I will make it again and I might include on my Ravelry, not like, can't really include like proper stitch counts or anything, but I think it wouldn't be that hard for me to calculate how to do some bigger sizes. And then just provide, like, once you've worked up to this point in the pattern, do this. And then you still need the pattern to be able to make it. Could do that. We'll see. We'll see if that happens. Then the other sample knit that I was meant to send off, but forgot, is for Georgie, the Fiber Fox. For her, I made the Throwover by Andrea Maori. Isn't the colour combination stunning? Georgie picked it. Of course she did, because she's amazing with colours. And I did this so quickly. I think I knitted the whole thing in nine days. Now, it's a it's an open gauge. It's tighter than the Felix. I think this is like a 16-something stitch gauge, and the Felix was like a 14, I think. But it was still, you know, big needles. It was colour work, so that makes it go quickly. Uh, Georgie also likes to wear all her jumpers cropped, so this is like even more cropped than the Felix. So that made it go really quick. And yeah, I just really enjoyed it. It was a fun knit. So the yarn that I used is a DK weight yarn. The pattern originally uses a worsted weight yarn, so it's a little bit thicker than this. So I don't think you'll be able to see it on camera, but it is quite an open gauge for the yarn. It's not see-through but it's more open than I normally would knit with yarn like this. I don't think you can see. So this is Georgie's Merino DK, which is 100% superwash Merino. So I would worry that it would pill quite quickly. Merino is soft, worked at an open gauge. It's gonna pill no matter what. Uh, so I would be worried about that, but you get to see the colours really well, which is the main point of a sample. Not to necessarily say to people make this with this yarn, but more you get to see what it looks like, knit up, you get to feel it and things like that. And I haven't washed and blocked this entirely. So I worked the yoke and then because I was worried that maybe my gauge wasn't as good and as accurate as I thought it would be, I thought I was knitting a bit tighter. I steam block just the yoke. That's why it looks really neat. <laughs> I don't knit colour work this neat normally, especially not superwash. But so I still need to weave in ends. There's a lot of ends because of the different colours. <laughs> and then I can give this a block. Like I said, I kind of just put it on the side and was like, yeah, yeah, yeah I need to ship that. And I just didn't do anything with it. It happens. But the different colours. The main colour is Shipwreck, where I have... I had four skeins of this. I have this much left. And then... A whole nother skein. Now, I think that's mainly because the body is so short. So, I think if I had made it kind of... Longer and to the length that I would have needed, I definitely would have needed this fourth skein. But so there's still quite a bit left of the main color, and then the contrast colors. There's three of them. I just knocked you. I'm sorry. I've got lichen, which is this kind of like mustardy yellow, but it's a bit more green leaning in my opinion. This is briar rose, a really nice pink. And Poison, which I'm actually using for another project as well, but different, different base, but same colour. And Poison, yeah. So that's the three colours. And as you can see, I have quite a bit of that yarn left because Georgie only had 100 gram skeins for that and you need less than 50. 
but there are a lot of points. Mm, I shouldn't. I'm being over dramatic here. There's a couple of points where you have to work with three colors. My hair. Because as you can see, there's these points where the one color comes up and you end up working three colors in a row. So if you're not comfortable with color work with three colors, this is probably going to be a little bit tricky, but probably a good project where you can practice color work with three colors because you only ever have one stitch in that third color. So the way I hold my yarn when I do two color color work is contrast color in the left, main color in the right. And then if I was doing color work with a third color, I would also hold that yarn on the left side, but I'd only pick it up when I needed it. And that would work, worked really well with this because you only ever had one stitch in that color. So it was only every couple of stitches had to quickly pick it up, uh, knit a stitch with it, drop it again. And then it's just, you know, like you always kind of do with color work, just kind of stretching it out just to make sure your floats are okay. And that worked really well. It did mean this color work section went quite slowly, but this like one by one went really well. And my gauge is a little bit tighter there. Like I just said earlier. <laughs> and I think the only modification other than knitting it shorter was I messaged Georgie and was like, do you want me to add that same one by one color work to the sleeve just for a bit of fun? Because otherwise you have all this color work detail in the yoke and then nothing else. And she was like, oh, I'd love that. So that's the other thing that I added to it. And I think I alternated the shipwreck on the body here, but I don't think I did for the sleeves because with the decreases, it just got way too messy. But I think you can kind of see there's like not actually that much difference between the body and the sleeve. There is obviously like a bit of variation, but that's just what happens with hand dyed yarn. So yeah. I definitely will make this again. It was a lot of fun. I just have no idea what yarn I would use out of my stash. <laughs> because worst of weight yarn isn't really something I have a lot of. And because of the loose gauge, fiber then becomes more important. Or I can use a thicker yarn and then not work it as loose as in like same gauge. But if it's thicker, then it's a tighter gauge for that yarn. Yeah, and the colors and things. But it was a really fun pattern. And like I said, a really really quick knit so love that and then the last sample piece not the last finished object the last sample piece is for Laura of the Lonely Knitter who's the organizer behind East Anglia Yarn Festival and from what I've heard about how it's gone so far apparently the show's been even more amazing than last year so I'm really happy for her and Happy for all my other friends that it's been going well. So for Laura, um, I made the Storm Shawl as a sample piece. It hasn't been blocked. <laughs> I only have two ends to weave in because this pattern by Hohi Locatelli is a shawl that only uses one skein of fingering weight yarn. So the yarn is by Laura, the Lonely Knitter. The colour is called Upside Down and is inspired by Stranger Things dust <laughs> and is her merino singles base and I think it has 400 meters per 100 grams and you needed less than that I think for the shawl I also chose to go down a needle size because I'm a bit of a loose knitter and I was worried that one if I go for the recommended needle size the gauge would be two loose and open and then just wouldn't look nice and I was worried I'd run out of yarn I didn't gauge swatch I was like it's a shawl me <laughs> and I think my gauge is a little bit tighter than it was meant to be but I still think it would have been too loose on the recommended needles and so by the time I finished the shawl well I got to the point where you were meant to finish like you do a few garter repeats and then you do the pico edge. And before I did the pico edge, I kind of looked at, okay, how much yarn do I have left? I think I still had 20 grams, maybe a bit more. 
And I was like, oh, that's way too much yarn. <laughs> I, I'm going to keep going. I was like, I'll do a couple more garter repeats just to use up a bit more yarn to get a bit more like length and width and stuff. And then I bound off when I only had like a little bit left. And I think I finished with like nine grams left. So I could have made it bigger and I knew that. But I also didn't want this garter repeat to be way thicker than like the ones here. I could have of course done another one of these like eyelet rounds that you might be able to see. <laughs> so there's an eyelet round, there's also these, well row, not round. And there's also these dropped stitches and the dropped stitches were fun to work and they were quite easy. But when you're wrapping the yarn multiple times around the needle, that's fun and quick, but then when you have to, you know, knit through one of them and drop the rest, that's also fine. The problem is that the other stitches that are still wound around your needle, one loop gets really tight and then you can't push the stitches and it just didn't flow very well. But the pattern was absolutely amazing. I think this also only took me a couple of days. Was it like six days? I think it was slightly less than a week to knit this entire shawl and it's just because it's only garter stitch and then you have a bit of like eyelets and some dropped stitches which are fun and yeah it's just it was I really enjoyed it I don't know if I'd make it again because I'm not sure I'd get much wear out of it but maybe I would who knows but yeah so one of those shawl patterns where you can just use one of your beautiful hand dyed skeins or one beautiful skein of fingering weight yarn so that needs to be washed and blocked and sent off to Laura. She wasn't vending at East Anglia Yarn Festival, so she said, like, don't even worry about sending it. There's no point because she can't really, you know, use it to promote her business. So that's the last sample piece that I've worked up. And I have one more on the needles that I'm going to show later. And then I've got one other sample piece that I still need to work up that I haven't started yet. And then the final finished project that I have that I'm showing off today, because like I said, don't know where some of the other ones are, is a test knit. So before I share it, I do want to say I'm not really test knitting this year. So last year I did so much test knitting. I think it was 13 in total last year. So that's more than one a month. And I had two times last year where I had three test knits going on at the same time. It was all fine and it worked out, but it just was, it wasn't that fun because I didn't get to, there was a bit more pressure to work on the test knits. And normally with the speed I knit at, I can work on a test knit, put it down, work on other things and not feel stressed and pressured. But with three at the same time, it was like, you got to work on at least one of these test knits. You can't work on something else. So that was a bit rough. And then obviously with doing a lot of test knits, you're more likely to then encounter a test knit, in, like not process, but encounter a test knit that just doesn't go that well. And I had that and I've talked about that and I'm not going to talk about it again. And so I kind of just was like, I think I'm just, at first I was like, I'm going to stop. I'm just not going to do it anymore. And then I was like, well, that's stupid because one, I enjoy it. And then two, I was like helping because quite often, you know, with the size that I am, I'm in that range where you're starting to have issues finding testers. And I love the whole process and I just like helping. <laughs> that's really, that's really it. I like knitting and I like helping. So I kind of was like, okay, I'm just going to be a bit pickier with the whole thing. And it really has to be a design, not just where I'm like, ooh, that's nice, I'd like to knit that, but really has to be something where I'm like, I, as soon as that comes out, I'm gonna buy the pattern, I'm gonna make it because I just love it so much. That's the kind of thing, we, the level we have to hit. And then also to kind of focus more on test knitting for people that I already have test knitted before and who I know and who I really know appreciate the work that goes into it and there's no chance for things to really go wrong in that sense so that's kind of 
what I'm using. It doesn't mean I'm not testing for people that I don't know because this project I'm about to show is for someone that I've never tested it before. I've never knitted any of her designs before. So this is the, I think you pronounce it, Kara pullover. So I'm going to show it off here first. Looks just like a raglan jumper, right? <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> How beautiful is that? And then I'm like, I did that. I made this. I did this. <laughs> and it's just absolutely stunning. So this is exactly the same yarn, both the yarn base brand and everything, and the same colors as the original design. Because I saw it on Instagram, I think it was December last year, and just fell in love with it. And Amelia had that thought of like, when that is out, I want it in exactly the same yarn and the same colours. And so when I then saw in January the kind of call for testers go up on Instagram, I was like, okay, I'll apply. I'm not guaranteed to get a spot. So, you know, if I get a spot, that's great. If I don't, that's also fine because I'll just buy the pattern in the future. So I got a spot and then was like, well, I have to buy the yarn for it because I don't have it. <laughs> and the original yarn and the yarn that I used is Hillesvag Ask. So it's a thinner yarn than the other Hillesvag that I showed you in the, oh, I can show you, I can show it. So the yarn for the Jules Cogenza was, I think it was Sol, which is like, I think it has like, 280 meters per 100 grams or something like that so it's thicker than the ask the ask is 315 meters i think and it's classed as a sport weight but i think it's it could also be used in like a dk gauge and i ordered this online from what's the shop called Trollenwollen, i think it's called it's in I was about to say Norway. It's in the Netherlands. And so this arrived in while I was still in Germany because I was knitting this in Germany. And I finished it in Germany, actually. Because I also knitted this quite quickly. Because the thing that was so enjoyable about this jumper, and which I didn't know when I applied, because I just applied. I didn't even check like, construction or anything. Is it's a raglan jumper. So you can see the raglan seams work top down i love top down raglans i just find the increases like it's a lot of fun and it's really the body of a raglan jumper that where i then kind of slow down and i'm like oh, is it done yet <laughs> so then to only have to work because you can see i lengthened my jumper so if you don't <laughs> have to make your jumpers longer like i do you only i think end up knitting about like this much of the body before you start the color work I added four or five centimeters extra to the length because I needed it. But then you have the color work chart and then you have the ribbing and then you bind off. So then all of a sudden the body's done. And then you have the same sort of thing with the sleeves because you also have color work on the sleeves. Isn't it so cute? So first of all, the decreases make the whole thing really fun. And then you finish the decreases and then I normally have to do like a little bit more to get the correct length. But you have have the color work to do. <laughs> and so that was a lot of fun. And so I modified the body, made it a little bit longer. And what I did for the sleeves is I added an extra round before I worked a decrease round. So that gave me the extra length that I needed. So I didn't have to add like a bulk later on. And it also then means the decreases are more spread out and I get a better fitting sleeve that isn't too tight and then well just too tight the whole way through yeah so knitted this really quickly because like I said love a raglan but then you get the cute color work and can highly recommend a lot of people a lot of the testers did it in kind of like hand dyed yarn where they use the variegated yarn for the color work and that also looks really good I don't think it's what I would want. So if I'm remembering correctly, the design is inspired by Persian ceramics. And so that's part of the reason why I think the blue with this kind of, 
light grey just works really well for that. And the only other thing I kind of see is going maybe for like green or something, because then it would remind me a bit more of some of the ceramics we have here in Austria and things. So it's something I'd have to think about, but the actual knitting process, I would totally do this again. And the design is beautiful. It's just, it's a design where I would want to pick my colors really carefully. So that's the only thing that would kind of stop me. Yarn wise, it made the color work really simple. It's a grippy non superwash yarn. I used, <laughs> that's the funny story with this jumper. So the recommendation was five skeins of the main color, one skein of the contrast. And when I got accepted and was like, okay, cool. I need to buy this yarn because I want exactly the same thing. I then also thought, when my mum was in Norway last year, I asked her, could you get me some Hillesvag Ask because I wanted to knit with it for a really long time. And I was like, if you're already there, you get to see the colors. I don't have to, you know, judge it online. I can trust you. And I then got that at Christmas time when I was in Dubai. And then when I started looking at patterns, I was like, I really want to do color work. <laughs> but the problem was, I was like, it, like I said, you can order this yarn from the Netherlands because if you order it from Norway, I'd have to pay customs when it arrives. And with the Netherlands, I don't have to. But I was like, oh, ordering all the way from the Netherlands for like the one skein I needed for the contrast color for the jump I was thinking of making with that yarn. And so I was like, I'm just gonna leave it. I was like, it's not that important. Eventually, maybe, you know, my parents can pick up another skein when they're in Norway, when they have time. Or, you know, maybe I'll order it in the future, who knows. And then this came up and I was like, hang on, wait, I can order the contrast color at the same time for the other jumper. But then I was like, oh, but officially with the yardage, I would have to actually buy a second skein and use a couple of meters. But knowing how yardage often works out, designers typically overestimate. And I was like, well, I could risk it and just get one skein. But then if it doesn't work out, that would be really frustrating. And then I had the genius idea that the main color that I'm buying for this jumper could work as the contrast color for the dark green yarn my mum had bought me. So I ordered an extra skein because it was like, even if I use the majority of the five skeins for this jumper, I only need a little bit more than one skein and I might not even need it. So I did that. I bought six skeins in total, but then I have this much left, but this is only my fourth skein. So I have two full skeins of the Hillesvag Ask left, which is now going to be too much for that jumper, which is fine. I'm not complaining about it. It's just, if I just bought what I needed, I would have had the perfect amount for that other jumper because here I have like 20 grams left and then I still would have had like one extra but now I have like 220 grams and I'm like, nah, oh well. <laughs> and this is how much I have left of the blue. This blue is absolutely unbelievable. I, I love blue, but I've been going through such a green phase, but this really kind of made me go, I need to need some more blue things now. <laughs> and especially I'd love to get more of this color because I just think it's so beautiful. So I have about 60 grams left of this color. And then I thought like, I'll knit that other color work jumper in the green and this color soon. And then whatever's left, I can just kind of, you know, use to make something with this. I've even got a hat pattern that uses sport weight yarn and could work with this yarn. So, you know, it's, it's not gonna go to waste. <laughs> but mm, it's so beautiful. And it's finally been washed and blocked. Like I said, I finished it in Germany, but then with the packing and moving and everything. I didn't weave in the ends, I didn't block it. So I did that when I got to Austria and it's dry and ready for some pictures for the release. And the last thing I think that I wanna say about this is I made a really stupid mistake. <laughs> so the first round of color work that you work is one where it's like work one stitch in the contrast color, work however many stitches in your main color, and you repeat that the whole way through. And then in the next row, it changes because you either work 
this little like star kind of motif or you work this like bigger motif here and I just, I just think I was so excited to get knitting on this that instead of working this like star when I was meant to I worked the other pattern so effectively what I did is my entire color work pattern on my jumper is shifted over by like five stitches <laughs> So I messaged the designer when I noticed this and I didn't notice until like round 10, stupid me. And I messaged her and I said, is it, do you want me to rip back? I, 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 I would have been happy to do it. It's a test and it's what you have to do. But she kind of like asked for some clarification and she was like, but it still works out if it's just shifted over. And I was like, yeah, it just means, you know, that what I have in the middle of my jumper is different to what everyone else would have. And she's like, no, that's fine. And so in, I think in some ways it's actually kind of cool because now you can make the decision. Do you want to work it like the original or do you want to work it silly like me? Because I still think it turned out absolutely beautiful. And you wouldn't really be able to tell unless you'd, you know, made it yourself. And then we're looking at mine and going, hmm, yours is off by five stitches. <laughs> but it's still, it's a full repeat. Well, no, it's a half repeat off. So that's why everything's just kind of switched places <laughs> yeah it, it you know silly me it happened but I think it still looks absolutely incredible I love it so much and there's a couple of designs that I've seen recently on Instagram also like inspired by ceramics and things and I'm so here for it I love like Delft blue and stuff like that so this jumper and all those other jumpers are just so my thing and uh, I'll probably be making a lot more of these kind of jumpers in the future. And it's mainly, like the design I really love, but for me I think it was mainly the yarn color that got me. So that one's done and should be out soon. And yeah, I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> so that's all the finished objects I'm sharing today. And we've got a lot of whips, a lot of whips. Because when don't I have a lot of whips? <laughs> That's the real question. We'll start with my older projects that I've been working on. Because I have been trying to make progress on some older projects and not just cast on new things. But I've also started a lot of new things. Uh, first of all, one that is part of my kind of like goals for this year. Not that I've made that video yet <laughs> because I'm really behind with filming. I say behind, but it's more, you know, something's got to give when there's a lot going on in your life. And for me, it was, sadly, it was filming. But one of the things I want to achieve this year is I want to finish one of my, like, scrappy blankets. And the one I'm mainly focusing on is my Battenberg. So the Battenberg is, you crochet these... Oh, I've got one. <laughs> you crochet these little squares and then you attach them. So it's inspired by the Battenberg cake and I finally started joining my squares because you don't have to wait until you've got all your squares to start joining. That's the beauty of this blanket. So this is what I have so far. <laughs> so the reason I've currently made it so wide and not longer is because I'm trying to test out how wide I want the blanket to be and I think I'm almost there because I don't want it to get too big and too heavy so this is I think currently where I'm going to leave it and now I'm going to focus on adding squares and getting length but the beauty is I can always you know once I get a certain length and I go it needs to be wider I could just start attaching squares on the side and it's not a big deal and if you're aware of the Battenberg cake, you know that it's typically like a square of like yellowy color, a yellowy white color, and then a square of pink. But the whole idea of this blanket is just that you've got these alternating colors. So I'm using DK and Worsted Scrap Yarns, like this brown here, for example. And I'm using a main color where I've bought the yarn for it. It's the only bit of this blanket where I've had to buy yarn. And that's where I'm using... Phil Kalana Peruvian Highland Wool in the color Marzipan. I think it's color 977. 
because I've seen the label so many times. <laughs> and I've mainly just, over the last... How long have I been working on this? Since 2021? 2020 even? Can't remember. It's definitely a pandemic blanket. But I've made... Just occasionally I've made squares. It hasn't been a lot. Like maybe 10 or something in a year. And then last year I started making more squares. And then when I got back from Dubai I was like, this is it. I'm going to commit to doing a load of squares. Getting those done. Washing them. Blocking them. Because I'm using two different yarn weights. Like this is a DK. And if I hadn't blocked it then it would be like really cinched in and at least now it looks nice enough and it might mean the whole blanket at the end doesn't need blocking because that's a whole adventure I'm not sure I'm ready to deal with but yeah so I started joining them and currently my problem is I need way more squares of the main color and I knew that but I just haven't had that yarn for as long because it took me a while to make the choice of what yarn to use and I think this is the last skein I have and I've obviously got this square that still needs to be washed. And I've got, I think, a couple more that I did just before I moved. So I should be ready to add more squares soon. And then I just need to buy more of this yarn, sadly. <laughs> I'm trying not to buy as much yarn this year because I've got so much beautiful stuff which I want to use. So I've got things in here like this is leftover Sunday's Gone Double Sunday from a hat that I made. I've got yarn left over from Rauma. This is the Rauma DK, which I use for my Cindy's Choice socks and for the elf slippers I made for a friend of mine. And I still have plenty of yarn left. So that's been going in here. I've got some skeins of Letalopi where I've used a bit. And mainly what's in this project bag is yarn where I'm happy to use up the entire skein. So this one shouldn't actually be in here um, because I've got another bag of DK Worsted yarn where I'm like, I'll make a square or two, but then it's going back into my scrappy yarn pile. I've got Sugar Baby Alpaca from Wool and the Gang where I made the Laulu shawl. I've got some hand dyed yarn, which I used for my mum's Humla Bee shawl. So it's all every yarn really that's in here. I've used for a project. There's only a couple of squares, like this silver is a, like gray silver is a yarn my mum gave me. I think same with this pink. And I also have a bit of a skein left over that she gave me because I panicked before leaving for Dubai. I was like, I don't have anything to knit on, on the plane that would work and that would actually be relaxing. I was like, I wanna make these squares. So mum, Gave me some yarn so I could make a couple of squares on the plane, which I did. And like I said, I want to try and get this done before the end of the year because I have so much DK and worsted scraps now. And I also would just like a finished blanket for next winter. So this is my kind of focus one because it's the easiest one to work on no matter where I am. Because all I have to do is bring a little bit of yarn, bring my crochet hook, and that's it. And I, whenever I'm at home, I can then, you know, crochet squares together. But it's the most portable. Whereas all the other ones get bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is just make squares and then worry about joining it later. Yeah. So I'm trying to make progress on that. It's been, since the move, it's been neglected a bit. Because, well, I've just had other things to kind of think and worry about. But I'm hoping, currently I have quite a few squares that need to be joined to the blanket. So I want to do that. That's currently what's holding me back. I don't want to make more until I started using them. And then the other main thing that's holding me back is I need more of my main colour. But I'm currently... I don't know how many to buy. I don't want to spend too much money. I also don't want to, you know, only buy a couple of skeins, then get through those really quickly. So it's just a bit of a, I'm in a weird place with the yarn for that one. <laughs> Another old project that I've been making some progress on and have actually made a lot of progress on since I last shared it, but it's been 
like a long time since I shared this. I think I did share it at some point last year, but I just haven't really, I just haven't made that much progress on it if you think about the amount of, like how long it's been since I last shared it. This is the Spring Intentions Wrap by Cat Weaver. And this is how much I have currently. So it's it's getting there. I think I've calculated that I'm about 70% of the way through this. And you're meant to use like six different colors. I'm only using, I think, four different colors. Yeah, I think it's four. And I'm just changing up the color whenever I want to. And all of the yarn is by the Fiber Fox from her 2021 club. 2020? 2021. I can't remember. One of her clubs. And everything other than the blue is the club colorway. And since last time, I've done this much. But like I said, bear in mind the fact that it's been months and months since I last shared this. And it really just has been... I'm going to move the marker for next time. <laughs> it really just has been a project that I've picked up maybe like once a month and worked like one section. And so it's just been really slow going. And the whole point of this is that it's meant to be kind of a slow meditative thing. So it's just a knit and pearl texture that you work the whole time. And... It, it makes a beautiful pattern. Like, I think it looks incredible, all the different, like, designs that you have. And this yellow is my favourite. I love it. It's just... I'm not always in the mood for a pattern where I do have to, like, check it all the time. So there's certain ones, like the Moss Stitch, really intuitive, really easy to figure out. And most of them are easy to figure out. It's just the first few rows you have to get the setup correct and then everything else is really easy. So I've been trying to make an effort to work on this a bit more because well I've had this on my needles since March, April 2021 so it's been a while and I'm just ready for it to be done. So the colour choices aren't like the kind of thing I'd normally go for and I'd wear but I do think they're very you know spring-like and I think especially once I like have it on and wear it I think it's going to be just a really fun spring pop of color so I think I will get a lot of wear out of it but it's just as much as some of the colors really go together I think the different colors with all the different textures like I would have chosen something different but it was all the yarn I had that would have worked for this and I hope I'm going to have enough yarn left because I have this much left of that one can't remember all the names anymore it's been so long and I don't have all that much left with my other ones it kind of looks and feels like I've got about 20 grams ish left for all of them which isn't that much but then again I don't have all that much left to do like I said 30% but that's probably still like this much <laughs> so we'll see I'm hoping to try and get this done by the time the colder weather finally kicks in again, I don't want to rush it because that for me defeats the purpose of knitting in general, but this project. And I'm just trying to kind of give myself a section to work on and trying to finish it by the end of the month. And if I don't, that's fine. But, and if I finish it, start the next one. And if I finish that one too, great. But just to have it a bit more on my radar and be aware of the fact I want to try and get it done so that I actually pick it up and knit with it. Because it's one of those projects, like with working a cardigan flat, the more I work on it, the more I actually want to work on it. But when I haven't worked on it in a while, I'm just like, oh no, that was a lot of effort and like I had to pay attention, which isn't really true. I had to pay attention for a little bit and then I was free to just knit for a really long time. And I actually like the fact that I have to pay attention a little bit and then have freedom again, so. It's one I really need to be picking up and working on because, like I said, it's enjoyable when I'm actually working on it. Another project that I've had on my needles for longer is the... Hi, 
Hibernation house socks. I had to look that up. Not my notes. I had to look at my notes because it was like I can't remember. Hibernation house socks by Lindsay Fowler that I started in October last year. And this is where I've got the poison colorway in a different yarn base. So you can kind of see how different yarn bases take up the color slightly differently because there is quite a bit of difference. Because this is 100% merino, but this is the plumpy base by Georgie of the Fiber Fox. So it's like 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, I believe. And I've got this yarn, and then I've got Winter Solstice on her Surrey base. And I finished one sock. Wee isn't it cute? So you have this really squishy, thick cuff, which is done in twisted ribbing, but only the knit stitches are twisted. And it's double, it's folded, it's like knitted together. So it's super squishy, super nice, but it does mean this is the bit that takes a really long time with these socks. And that's what I've stalled on with the second one. But talking about the first one, see, so after the rib, you then work a nice heel with like a pearl, knit pearl texture as well. And then also on the front of the sock. And that whole thing went so quickly. <laughs> But it's just the the cuff that really has slowed me down. And this is how far I am on the second. I did immediately cast on the second sock after I finished the first. But it, it didn't really help because I just haven't gotten very far. I also just haven't been too much in the mood to knit socks right now. Because it's so small and it's so fiddly. And I'm hoping my... I'm, I'm hoping the like desire to knit this will come back soon. It's also just, it can be a bit tricky. You're, so I'm using 2.5 millimeter needles, which is the recommended needles. And while that works perfectly for the plumpy on its own later on, because you don't change needle size, it's a bit tricky working at such a tight gauge with the two yarns held together here, especially when the story is just like a bit sticky and it just means that sometimes I don't like catch the whole stitch and then I have to fix that and it's just it's a bit fiddly and as you can see I've only got one of the needles on there because I haven't been working on it and I needed the needles for something else so slow going <laughs> but I know that you know putting in just a little bit of time even if it's just once a week once the cuff is done, the rest goes really quickly. So I'm just trying to kind of, like with the Spring Intentions wrap, just, you know, occasionally pick it up, work on it for a little bit. And it used to be my kind of like commuting project, but I don't really have to commute here anymore uh, because that's kind of the thing that made, I'll, I'll talk about the move later, but I'm not really commuting right now. And so it just means these haven't really been worked on. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping, because it wouldn't really take me that long to finish them. And I know I enjoy it when I'm actually working on it, but it's like most projects, if I actually work on it, I enjoy it. I've actually got mainly old projects, I've just realized. <laughs> so another old project that I'm trying to make some progress on is the Cozy Classic Light by Jessie May. So I made the No Sweatshirt by Park Williams last year. It was a test knit I did. And I had a 500 gram cone of the Hulse Coast in the old gold colorway, I think it is. And I had like a hundred and something grams left of the yarn. And I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. And I was like, well, holding it double, it's not going to be enough for really anything. It's a Merino cotton blend. So that kind of, in my opinion, limits a bit what I can use this yarn for. And then I thought, okay, well, if I hold it single, could I make some kind of like a summer top out of it? Because if it's worked at a loose gauge, it could be just like a nice throw over a singlet kind of a top that gives a little bit of warm, a little bit of coverage, but because of the kind of cotton in there and Merino also helps to actually keep you cool, not just warm. I was like, mm, 
could work. So I looked at the Cozy Classic Light. Did I say Raglan before? It's the Cozy Classic Light. And figures I would have enough to make one. I don't even think in my size. I think the next size up is the one I'm making. So it's a bit more loose. And last time I showed those, I'd literally only just started. I had like maybe a centimeter or two of the ribbing done. And then this was a project this year as well, at the beginning of the year, where I was just like, just make some progress on it. Because once you've done the ribbing, you love raglan increases, and then it will all go a lot quicker. And that's what then happened. I made all of this progress in just a couple of days, because after the ribbing was done, the raglan increases was when it got really fun, because I really like this pattern. I also like the original a lot. And so it still doesn't look like a lot, but that's just because it's thin yarn, it's smaller-ish needles, it's 3.75, it's not that small. So you can see it's quite see-through and gappy, and obviously that was going to happen, it's very thin yarn. Uh, but I did do a swatch to check my gauge, and the beautiful thing because of the merino in this yarn is that... Is it merino? I don't even know if it's merino, I just know it's wool. It's wool <laughs> and it then fluffs up and blooms and so it then ends up not being as gappy as it currently is and it, the whole the stitches also look prettier. So slow going but I'm happy I've been picking it up more and it's also just going to be one I'm hoping I can finish it for the warmer months that are coming. But if it doesn't happen, it will be ready for next year or will be ready for hopefully the next time I go to Dubai to visit my parents. And it's just a project where I had finished the no sweatshirt and was like, what do I do with all this leftover yarn? <laughs> and it was just then really nice to immediately start the project, even though I knew it wasn't going to be done really quickly. I just like, I'm really at the point now with knitting where when I finish a project and I have scraps I don't just want those scraps lying around until I'm like what even was this yarn I don't remember I want to use my scraps and that's one of the other big things uh, one of the big goals for this year for me is to try and make more of an effort to focus on projects that use up my scraps so that will be something you'll see a lot more of this coming year so that's the Cozy Classic Light, and then the last old project, yes, the last old project is the Saglin, is it Pullover or just the Saglin, by Albina McLaughlin, and I learnt that her name is pronounced Albina, not Albiona, so thank you, thank you for the subscriber who told me that, because I always want to know these kind of things, you know, I don't pronounce things perfectly, especially, you know, English is my second language. So it happens that there's certain things where people, you know, just grew up and they knew how to say certain things. If I never had to use the words growing up, because I went to school in Australia, New Zealand, and, you know, if I didn't need to use it at uni and then I come across a word later on in life, I'm like, we're just going to wing it because we have to. <laughs> I try and look up things, but if there's no, like, pronunciation videos online, then there's nothing I can do. Um, so I'm always really grateful when people point out, like, oh, especially names. Like, names is something, if you've never heard them before, can be really hard to know how to pronounce them. So I'm really happy that I now know that it's pronounced Albina McLaughlin. And I also pronounce things wrong in German all the time because there's so many words that I never had to use in my life and now I do and then I say them and they're like do you mean this and I'm like <laughs> yeah I do <laughs> so Saglin pullover I think this is the first time I've shown it where you actually get to see the color because there's actually enough light so it's blowing me out but I'm not important so as you can see it's just a kind of normal looking normal ish looking jumper and it kind of is but there's something really beautiful about both the name and the construction. And that's the fact that it's a combination of a saddleback shoulder and a raglan. Hence, saglan. Saddleback and raglan. Get it? It's cool. 
and I don't think I'm going to be able to show this off. I'll show it off on what I'm wearing because the arrow sweater is similar-ish. So you can see, hopefully, that I've got this increase line here and another one back there. And what you're doing there to get that kind of like saddle shoulder is you're only increasing on the body and not the sleeve. So the sleeve stitches stay consistent. That's why you get this kind of line down here. And that's what you have at the beginning here. And then you start to do something that's very different to this one is you alternate between kind of increasing just for the sleeve, increasing for body and sleeve. And it just creates, like if you, can I show it off better here? You might, no, I don't think you'll be able to see it, but the line that you get, so it goes across here from the saddle back shoulder and then it goes curves down here and then it goes across here and it's just really interesting looking a lot of fun to knit but the beautiful beautiful thing about this other than the fun knit is it creates a beautiful fit knit fit <laughs> and so i've tried it on multiple times to try and gauge you know yoke depth and then also the body length and things like that and it's just really really nice it's a beautiful construction and that's the thing I've seen in general with Albina McLaughlin's patterns is her construction is just unbelievable so if you really you know don't just like normal stockinette kind of knitting and you like a little bit of a challenge and you're fascinated by garment construction Albina McLaughlin's patterns are incredible for that but you still get a jumper that's kind of you know anyone else would kind of look at this and just be like oh nice little like raglan jumper or whatever but you know like the work that's gone into it and it just creates a beautiful fit so I've had to make mine like always a lot longer than what was written in the pattern I think I've only just started the ribbing and I think I had to increase, like, um, make the body, like, five inches longer than the pattern says. And I still have four inches of ribbing left to do. And it's just sometimes really frustrating that I have to make things so much longer. <laughs> but the yarn that I'm using is Newtedon Held Double in the colour, I think it's called, like, Skog's Car or something like that. It's a very dark foresty green. So like I said, you saw it kind of the best when it was somewhere I think when we yeah, there we go. That's kind of what it looks like. And it's beautiful. It's one of the more fragile colours. So what I've done is normally with Newton the plate that comes in, I would pull from the outside and the inside if I'm holding a double and wind the whole 100 gram plate or whatever it is, how many grams, into a giant ball that I then knit from. And then occasionally what would happen is, you know, it would roll on the ground while I'm knitting and it might rip. And because this one is much more delicate and I'm not using a mohair or anything with it, I decided to wind it up into smaller size balls. And mainly ones like this size, maybe a little bit bigger, because I've seen other people do this online and it really made a difference not just to it not kind of ripping as much because there's not as much weight on the ball so if it goes flying off somewhere like when I was collecting everything together it kind of like flew off the sofa and rolled on the ground and it didn't rip because there's not that much weight pulling on the like thinner more delicate yarn so that's been really helpful with this one and it's also then been really nice for like motivation when knitting because it's like you're constantly attaching a new ball of yarn and you're like oh wow look how quick I'm knitting and you just keep going and keep going because you get to a point where you're like oh well it's not going to take me too much longer to finish this ball of yarn and then I can just attach another one and you keep telling yourself the same thing like with stripes and then you know all of a sudden you're like oh I've run out of little balls I need to wind up some more <laughs> and this is the last one I currently have and once I finish this one, I think I will have used three plates, I think, or I have three plates left. 
either way i have more than enough yarn because i bought a kilo of this colorway because i am a green lover and i'm still on the first 500 gram bag so i bought two 500 gram bags and i think i still have two or three plates left in the first one that's kind of the beauty of Newtedon. It you can knit it at a relatively loose gauge. I think this is eight. No, it can't be eighteen stitches. Is it eighteen stitches? Maybe. And yeah, it's you have a lot of meterage, but it's light weight, but you still get a really nice fabric. And oh, I just love this guy. So yeah, slow progress. And the reason I first started knitting that was because. Uh, Albina put out a pre-knit call which I've talked about before so it's just you work on it put some pictures on like Ravelry just so people get an idea of what it looks like knitted up and it it's just better on Ravelry if there's project pages and so there was no pressure to finish this by any point and the pattern is out now it, it took a while to come out I've said that before I think the last time I shared it I was like, it's not out yet, which I found surprising, and that was apparently because there needed to be some more tweaks to the pattern. But it's out now, it can be bought, and I would highly recommend it. It's a wonderful pattern, and I'm really glad I got it for free because I can already see myself making a lot more of these because it's a sort of like the Cozy Classic Raglan, like it's a statement, not the same, a, a psalm. It is a Staple piece. I was about to say stable. <laughs> staple, kind of like wardrobe piece. Like the design of it. And so it's one that I know that I want to make over and over again. And I've plenty of Newton to do it, but I also have other yarn I can use. And yeah, love that one. Then I have three more. And I think they're all new. They must be all new. The first one is the other sample knit that I currently have on the needles. This is also for Jess of Skein and the Stitch. And this is the April Cardigan by Petite Knit. So as you can see, both sleeves are done. <laughs> but I now need to go back to working the body because I stopped this once I finished my skein of the fingering weight yarn that I'm using. And the Surrey alpaca is still attached. And the thing is, it's going to take a little while for me to finish this because I don't have enough Surrey to finish it. The Surrey that Jess stocks is 420 meters per 100 grams, I think. And normally Surrey is more like 300. That's what most people sell. But she had an issue with her supplier not having the yarn, so... The yarn she ended up bringing to Yarna was a 300 meter one, I'm pretty sure. And we forgot about that. So then we grabbed three skeins of the Surrey, three skeins of the Merino four ply yarn. And I would have needed four of the Surrey to match the meterage of the fingering weight yarn. So I still have a whole skein of the fingering weight yarn left and like 20 grams or something from the sleeves, which will be more than enough to finish the body and do the button band because it's going to be slightly cropped and yeah so I just need to this is how much Surrey I've left it's not going to be enough it's less than a it's less than 50 grams I think I said 100 grams before per 50 grams of the Surrey because it's lace weight so I'm gonna keep working on it with the skein that I have and then at some point Jess when she has time because she's busy with the arm shows and life uh, she'll send me another skein and then I'll be able to finish it and it's been a really enjoyable knit so this is also like a sort of saddleback like hybrid-ish construction so you might be able to see like these two lines that's for the saddle and then you also kind of alternate a bit between only doing the sleeves and then you do like normal raglan like this I think three different sections of increases that you have to do which I really enjoy because it's just a bit different especially when I've got other raglan jumpers that I've been working on it's just been really nice to have something that has a slightly different construction and I 
I also had it with this project that by the time I'd finished the skein of four ply that I was on and was like, oh cool, I'll work the sleeves now. I was like, mm, I want to keep working flat though. <laughs> and now I don't want to work flat because I've been working in the round on this for so long. But I will get back into it because it would be really good if I had finished using all the Suri by the time that the next story arrives just to, well, not all of it. I want to keep some of it so I can alternate skeins just to make sure it's all okay. But yeah, that's all the story I have left. It's definitely not going to be enough. And no, yeah, it's a really simple, well, I can't say it's a simple knit because you have to really keep track of your rows because at certain times you're increasing on the right side and the wrong side. And I've heard some people didn't realize that and then you know we're like oh cool they finished all my increases and they're like why is the size so small because they've missed a load of increases because they didn't increase on the wrong side so that's something to kind of you know it's it's a bit more you need to be a bit more engaged with this pattern than with other kind of raglan sort of jumpers but i've i've really enjoyed it and i think it's also because of the yarn so it's also from her Buffy collection, this color, both of them. The Suri is Angelus, inspired by Angel, who I love. And the fingering weight yarn, which I currently don't have here to show, but I'll show off next time, is a, so this is more of like a, got like purplish tones to it. And the fingering weight yarn is more of like a red and is called Blood Bright. So I think you can kind of see it there. And they're beautiful together. And it feels amazing as well. <laughs> uh, then another new cast on is another test knit that I'm doing. Because another one came up. Because of course it did. <laughs> when I said, you know, I wasn't going to test as much. But this one is for Iris, who I've test knit a few times for. I think it's been a few times now. And I really like her patterns I really like her as a person so I was like I want to do that I want to test it for you and this is the I have no idea how to pronounce it I don't think I'm going to try I'm just going to put it at the bottom because I just don't even want to I don't want to try I'm sorry I'm sorry <laughs> but it's a little like summer top and now I know it looks tiny but it's because it's two by two rib and once it's blocked it will stretch out I've done my swatch, it will all work out, trust the process. <laughs> and the really beautiful thing about this design is these like steps that you get on the V-neck. So they're little garter stitch steps and they'll look better once they've been blocked because they'll pop more, but it's absolutely beautiful. And it's a bit of a engaging knit as well because you have to Obviously, you can't work into the round at the beginning because you've got the v-neck, you've got the sleeve opening, well, arm opening, there's no sleeve. And so you need to keep track of things like, okay, when did I start doing these increases on the back and things to make sure that it matches up with the front. But all that really involves is just paying a little bit of attention when you're doing the back and keeping track and like just writing down, okay, on this row, this happened. And there's only a few times you have to do that. So I've got markers in the back just in case I either don't trust my numbers <laughs> in my previous counting or I need to kind of just want to double check or I can't find the numbers. And then you just apply that to the front and then you also just have to work the v-neck. And there's two v-neck options. I'm working the shallow v-neck because I don't want it to be too low cut, but you can also work deep. And I'm just on the body now, and that's just the bit that's just takes quite a long time because to get gauge, I've had to work on 2.5 millimeter needles <laughs> in two by two rib. And I've got a decent amount, but it, it does just take quite a bit of time to get a bit done. And I'm just trying to, every time I pick it up, to just do a centimeter or two and trust the fact that if I keep doing that eventually this will be done so and I don't want it to be super long either so at some point I need to try it on and just kind of figure out like how long do I want to make it but 
really love it. I also love the color. I love the yarn that I'm using for this. It's from Freya, which is the like in brand sort of yarn for self made, which used to be called Stoff und Stiel, but I think it's just called self made now and has nothing to do with Stoff und Stiel now. I can't remember. And this is the Soothing yarn by Freya, I believe. It's 100% tensile and it is just, it's amazing. <laughs> I love it. It's really soft, really drapey, but after blocking is when I really fell in love with it because it gets even more beautiful. So I can't wait to show this once it is done, but it will be a little while yet. We just got an extension on the test net, so my monkey brain immediately kind of went, well, I don't have to rush it now. I can just, you know, slowly work on it. But it also means I just haven't really picked it up in the last few days. <laughs> Before the move, I was working on this almost monogamously. I've had that a lot actually with some of my projects, like the Kara pullover and some of my test and I'll test and sample this as well. I was working on it almost monogamously because I was just in the mood for that. I think with the like stress of moving and whatnot, it was just nice to, to have one thing to work on. But since getting to Austria, I just haven't really picked that one up as much, which is bad because I need to finish it. Anyway, so that one needs to be done, I think, by mid-April. So I've still got a bit of time, but I also want to... I'd like getting test nets done sooner rather than later. So you don't reach the point where you start to feel stressed. The last project I'm showing today is related to what I said earlier about wanting to make more of an effort to knit with my scraps. And I've just lost some stitches. <laughs> so... Before moving, and at the beginning of this year really, I had already kind of looked at my stash and looked at my scraps and was like, I need to actually do something with these. Because my like yarn stash doesn't really stress me out because most of them I have plans and I have a good enough understanding of like yarn and yarn amounts now to be able to find things and I enjoy looking on Ravelry. But my yarn scraps, it's kind of like, I already had a plan for you and now you're left over and now it's kind of like I don't know what I want to do with you <laughs> I don't know what you want to become and it just got to a point where I was like I've got so many scraps and the blankets and things I was making I'm not working through them quick enough to use up all of it and you know with every project I finish I produce more scraps and I was like I need to make something else and so one of the things that I've decided on doing is to make a little Scrappy jumper. So the pattern for this, sort of, though I've tweaked it a lot, but the beginning numbers and everything are the cozy classic raglan. So I've been calling this my cozy scrappy raglan <laughs> because I don't think it's so classic anymore. And I'm holding one yarn all the way through. I held a double for the collar here and we'll do the same thing for all the ribbing. And then I'm just changing up what yarn I hold with it. So I'm getting these kind of like mild stripes. I knew that's what would happen and I'm really happy with it. And I've split the sleeves. I've only done like maybe an inch of the body, not a lot. And I always just kind of went with whatever I wanted when I got to, you know, the point where I was like, I've got a lot of stitches now. I tried to use my bigger scraps to I'm not trying to maintain like a stripe width or anything because especially as you can see after the split I've got after this big pink I've got a small blue and now I'm on a gray and my gray scrap isn't like that big and I'm just not stressing about it what I did is I laid out a lot of my scraps and split them up into kind of sort of color families and then kind of went okay what goes well together and what I said all along was the kind of palette of I had one black that I've already used I've got another scrap of a black here 
that I'm thinking about using. Maybe not all of it because black's handy for other things, but we'll see. And then this is the pink I used a lot of in the yoke. And I then didn't want to use all of it because I had a lot left of this. Same thing with this one. This is sock yarn from Aldi, which I didn't really want to use for anything else. And then it's like scraps of pinks and variety of different blues and purple tones and greys and blacks. And that's kind of exactly the kind of thing I'm going for. And I've got all of it in the project bag with the fiber fox. I think there should be more than enough to finish the jumper. If it's not, I've got more scraps that I can pull in. But I am the only thing I kind of did with when it comes to color was just to organize them and be like, okay, all of these work together in some way. So it's a kind of purpley tone is sort of what I'm going for because I've got blues and I've got pinks and not really reds, but blue and red make purple. So it's kind of, you know, it all works together. And the main yarn that I'm using is this cone of yarn. <laughs> I think this weighed 900 grams. I have one which is 900 grams and one which is a kilo and I never remember which is which. The color is sand and it's from Yarn Home, I think it's called, on Etsy. I think it's the New Zealand lambs wool. Fingering weight yarn and I think she's based in Lithuania and it's just, it's relatively rustic yarn, like it's not the softest. And it's giving me a jumper that's not the softest, but it's not, I don't know, it's not even that it's like super prickly. It's just, you know, it's a bit more rough. But I'm not really sensitive, so this will just be very warm, very cozy. And like I said, it's, I've used the starting numbers from the Cozy Classic Raglan, but I use the numbers from like the third size or something because I wanted a tighter fitting neckline and then I've just worked increases until I like the size and fit of it which means that I actually don't even have one of the sizes because I didn't follow that. I sort of followed the how you divide up like sleeves and front and back but I also had to improvise that a bit because my stitch count was then a bit different with what I wanted at the end. So it's kind of a, my own raglan jumper design, but I've used the Cozy Classic raglan as like a guide. And now I'm just gonna work on the body until I think it's done. I'm not gonna do the sleeves first because normally I would, but I think now I'm just gonna, I don't wanna have too many ends to weave in because for the most part what I've done for my scraps is, I think entirely for my scraps actually, is whenever they run out, I weave them in as I go. So as I'm about to run out, I start weaving in the new color as I'm knitting and then drop my, drop my scrap that I'm working with and pick up my new scrappy color and weave in the old scrap color. So it just means I only really have the ends at the beginning to weave in, and that's kind of it. Just because I don't want it then to be like a whole mess at the end. <laughs> because then I know I won't weave it in for ages, and then I won't wear it. So that's the main things I've been knitting on. Like I said, there's a couple of other things, but it just wouldn't have, one, this video is long enough, two, I wouldn't have had, like, that much to show and it's just better if I show it off in a future video. So that's all the knitting content. So thank you very much for watching. And for anyone interested, just a little bit of life stuff. I typically don't share that much, not because I don't want to, but because my videos are already so long. <laughs> so by the time I get to the end of all the knitting content, I'm like, I don't, one, I don't want to talk anymore. Often my throat hurts. I'm getting to that point now. And two, I'm like, people don't want to hear me talk anymore. Like, come on. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, the biggest thing right now that I moved. There's a variety of reasons for why I moved. Um, but the first thing I want to say is I 
loved it in Germany. So I didn't leave because I didn't love it. But I kind of just had to say, I hadn't found a job yet. And it would, it's just financially better for me to be here because there's a lot that needs to be done in my parents' apartment that I can do. And it also, you know, cost-wise is less for me. And so that was one of the reasons that financially it just made sense. It did mean I, have, I had to leave my job at the yarn shop in Mainz, which that was, I think, the thing, like, leaving Germany hurt, but I was like... It's not like I can't come back. If I find a job, you know, if I really want to live in Germany, I can find a way to live in Germany. But there's no guarantee that I'll be able to, you know, go back to Mainz and work in that shop again or find another yarn shop just like it. And I just really loved it then. And that was the biggest thing where I was like, should I really move? And I was like, it's only a couple of hours, you know, a week that I was working there and even if I went to like part-time or something it just it's not a lot of money and with things getting more expensive it's just you know it's financially not feasible but then the main other reason like the really if I'm being honest the main reason for me why I had to move was just because I'm health-wise I'm I'm not doing great <laughs> There's been some physical stuff, like physical health stuff that hasn't been great, but there's also mental health wise, there's been ups and downs and there's just a bit more stability here in Austria. And also there's a lot more freedom for me because the apartment I was in, first of all, there was a rent increase. So it was like, this was another reason I was like, I need to go too expensive for what it was. And I'm someone who, there's a lot of different hobbies I have and one of them is sewing which I couldn't do in Germany because I didn't have a sewing machine, I didn't have the room. I love cooking and baking and that wasn't that easy in Germany because the kitchen I had was really small, I didn't have an oven. So that was one of the first things I did when I got here, I was like, I'm gonna bake something. And the other thing is also one of the things that really helps me physically, mentally, just spiritually, every sort of thing, is having a bath as well. And didn't have a bathtub in Germany, and that's all stuff I have here. And this is the apartment that has always been home. So I've moved around so much in my life, but this is, for the longest time, has been kind of my home even though like actually living here fully I haven't actually done for that long so I did it between moving from New Zealand to the UK before I started my PhD I, I was here for a while also between leaving the UK and going to Germany I was here for a while and currently is kind of the first time where I don't have a next plan I don't have a job that I'm preparing for. I don't have specific jobs that I'm trying to find. I'm kind of just trying to focus a bit on my physical and mental health and trying to get just better. <laughs> and this is kind of the best place for me to do that. It's sort of my own little like rehabilitation center, but I'm obviously just by myself here, <laughs> but that's okay. But I've also got, you know, family nearby. I've got a couple of, like, family friends and things like that. So it's a really good place for me to be. And good memories. There's a lot of opportunities and things. So I don't know how long I'm going to be here for. It might be for a really long time. Who knows? But just... Yeah. I've moved. There's some things that made me sad about moving but I also know I, I left Germany knowing it was the right decision and I'm not you know absolutely heartbroken and upset by it I think every time I've actually left a country and moved away it was pretty much always because I knew it was the right thing to do so I'm happy to be back here I'm really enjoying the fact that spring is slowly starting to come into the apartment and into the, well, into the world. And so the apartment's just a lot brighter and I just love being here. It's so hard to explain 
why this place, like this apartment, is so special for me. It's not just like for most people, you know, home, like your childhood home is something nice because I barely lived here. I spent more time in New Zealand, really, but I had different places there. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked, but yeah, so you'll be seeing me here. Who knows what I get up to? And just I'll be knitting a lot as well. I have been knitting a lot more than I have previously because I still don't have a job and I'm trying to figure out what I want to do and there's just a lot of stresses and pressures but I'm also trying to you know not get too sucked into that and just try and slow down and be like I am very lucky very privileged that I get to live here rent free and get the support from my parents and I'm like I don't want to waste that by constantly being stressed and anxious about the future so I'm trying to enjoy the slower pace that I can now give myself <laughs> and make good decisions about my future and not take it for granted and not just try and rush into the next thing because I feel guilty that I'm not working or that I feel guilty that, you know, my parents are covering all my living costs right now. So that's also part of the reason why I'm trying to knit mainly from stash, stash as much as I can because I have no income. <laughs> No, not really. Like, there's a little bit from YouTube, but, you know, it's, it's not a lot, and that's not why I, I make these YouTube videos. And I'm just currently exploring what I want to do next, and what's going to be good for me, and what's what can I contribute to the world, and things like that. So, I'm going to leave it there, otherwise I don't know where we're going to head next. Yeah, I'm getting hungry. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. It's It's been a journey, this video. <laughs> so I will hopefully see you very soon. I'm Now that I'm back and I'm starting to get settled, I'm hoping I can get back into a routine of filming again. Because I've got lots of ideas. I just need the time and the motivation to actually sit down and film. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.